I find it to be true that if you surround yourself with people that will tell you the things you don't want to hear, you will have a better life. Find your people that will mm. that will keep you yeah. honest. Support you, but also keep you honest. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. We have the inspiring Nina Dobrev in the house. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. We brought you cupcakes because today is your 21st birthday. <laughs> I <kidding>. wish it <laughs> was. I really do wish it was. Although I kind of don't wish it was. Yeah. Well, no, I don't really better. have a choice. It You're, is. You probably you don't have a choice. What it is. <laughs> yeah. You've probably grown a lot of the last, you know, in your 20s. You're 29. Am I allowed to say that? I, well, you just did. And yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my age. I've, yeah, the person I am now is because of all the years that brought mm -hmm. me to this moment. And right. thank you for this. It looks weird right now because it fell apart, but. We brought um, you sprinkles, cupcakes. So sugar yummy. Sugar-free, gluten-free options, you know, all the Hollywood things. Which doesn't even, uh, doesn't even make sense to me. I don't know if something <laughs> could be sugar-free. Free, but regardless, exactly. thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Happy birthday to me. I'm happy gonna... birthday to you. We were just talking before we started that it's it's raining outside in mm -hmm. LA. And it rains like once every three years, <laughs> and it's happened to be raining on your birthday. And you were kind of making remarks how you're not sure how you feel about it, but we were saying, listen, look at the opportunity. This is a cleansing day, right? It's cleaning out the negativity, the things in your life that maybe aren't working, and the things in LA that aren't working to hopefully purify everything. So I think it's a perfect time. I it's love rain. that. I didn't see it that way when I when I first walked in. I thought rain, I woke up, and it was rainy and gross and not sad. Right. I just, like, I was like, really? On this day, it's it has perfect. to rain? But then when you put it like that, it puts things into perspective. And yeah, it just yeah. it does feel like clearing of old energy and mm -hmm. bad energy and hopefully tomorrow will be a sunny day and it'll start the next it will be. chapter. It will be. Absolutely. And there's a lot been happening uh, lately in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, the whole Time's Up movement, with the Me Too movement, which I think there's yeah. this cleansing that is happening. So it's almost perfect timing with the, the weather and the purifying of the air. Absolutely. And I know you're involved in the Time's Up campaign and movement, correct? Is, yeah. Why did you get behind this? What's it about? And what do you want people to know about it? Well, I um, I was invited to one of the meetings uh, in the early days before, this maybe a month and a half ago. And I didn't really know what was happening. It was like a secret society sort really? of meeting thing. And it was very vague. And when we got there... All women? All women. Um, our concern, we didn't want to alienate men, but at the beginning, we just wanted to figure out what we were and what we wanted to stand for and what message we wanted to put out and what our goals were. And so I walked into this room and it was Natalie Portman and um, Reese Witherspoon and Brie Larson and America Ferrer and all these, mm -hmm. uh, Chandra Rhimes, all these incredible powerhouse women. <clears throat> and what we took from it was that something needs to change immediately. It has changed. You can see the difference. Like you can see... Yeah with what happened with Harvey Weinstein and what's going on with Trump right now. And that's a whole separate other issue that I'll talk about later, but <laughs> it's not okay. Yeah. And women are not being treated equally and women are not getting the same fair wages that, that men are getting. And it's not that we, it's not an anti-men movement. It's right. a let's, let's rise up together mm -hmm. and treat everyone the same. Right. Equality and not movement. abuse, yes, equality yeah. movement and not abuse power. <clears throat> what I realized and what I learned in these meetings is that of the top, I think, 200 Fortune 500 companies, there's no women on any of their boards. Or if mm. there is, it's it's one woman on each, right. on each board of every company. And so, of course, if there's any kind of harassment or abuse, it's hard to go up to your bosses if none of them are women and none of them understand your position. It's all... Mm. It's just not fair. So our goal right. is to get more women on the boards of companies that have influence to trickle down into the other industries because it's not just our industry. Our industry gets the most press and right. the most notori notoriety and, and you hear our voices the most, but there's women in agriculture, there's women in finance, there's mm -hmm. women uh, housekeepers and all kinds of different women that, are in, that don't really have the power or didn't feel like they had the voice. Right. But now we're all kind of coming together and... and speaking up for the little guys, the medium guys, the big yeah. guys. It's just, I was incredibly inspired by it. And 
it's been an awakening and I'm, I'm really excited to move forward into this new year and see, I've already seen so much change and I, I want there yeah. to be so much more. Yeah. What have you seen in terms of the, you know, the Hollywood scene with all actor friends and actress friends? Mm. Have you experienced a lot of this unfair abuse, either emotional or any type of sexual turn-ons uh, that have been abused? as your career over the last you know decade in this or or your I mean, friends have they have yeah seen I've, I've seen friends? it with friends a lot I've heard a lot of stories it's not my position to sure. tell their stories yeah, yeah. of course but um, but is it as prevalent as people are talking about it absolutely in the news and even just in terms of on a sort of um, superficial level in terms of yeah. pay like women do just right. don't get like women don't, don't get paid not the making same as, as much huh no really never um, on every, on all movies, and even if it's the star, the female even if role. it's the star of the movie, really, the star of a TV show, she doesn't get paid as much as a guy does, and that's that's a smaller issue. I mean, the sexual right. harassment is a much more important issue, but it's but then again, it's not. Like, why why is there a discrepancy? Why does right. that happen? Yeah. Why don't we? Why aren't we viewed the same? Sure. It's confusing to me. But time's up. You know, it's the clock has been ticking for a very long time, and mm -hmm. now is the time to do something about it and change it. What can people do who are, you know, watching all these, you know, actors and actresses and are just women of influence who are promoting this? What can women do? Is it just post on a hashtag on social no. media? Is it what's the action steps that you I guys mean, are calling for? You can't do anything unless you know about something. Right. So this phase has been all about education. Awareness. And educating people mm -hmm. that this is happening and we need to do something about it. Now that we know about it, now that it's become become such a big movement, I mean Oprah Winfrey did Amazing. the most incredible speech. Unbelievable. Yeah. I heard she kind of winged it. I heard I, she wrote that speech in the car is what I heard, but I, there's no I, way. I would do. love to, to think <laughs> no that. Way. That would be great. Um, She's amazing. I think she should be the next president. Mm -hmm. um, but now that we have that awareness, I mean, Time's Up isn't just about the awareness. Like, If you go on the website, there's so many things that people can do. There's a fund that we've started um, on a legal side so that we can have uh, a bunch of lawyers, basically, like in-house lawyers, that are already paid so that mm -hmm. women in the agriculture industry or in any industry across the board have someone they can go to that's already paid for. So it's not about, like a lot of people can't afford a lawyer. So yeah. if something happens, they, if, if the company has a lot more money and power, they won't want to press charges because right. they feel small. But in this case, this, this fund, will pay for these lawyers so that everyone has representation across the board in That's every great. industry. That's great. And then there's a, more things that are going to be rolling out in the next yeah. couple of months that we're doing. That's but, awesome. Um, it, what's the website for it? Uh, Timesup.com or com. timesupnow.com. We'll figure so it out we, and make it up. Yeah, yeah let's, let's make sure so yeah. I don't say the wrong thing. We can just Google Times Up and I'm sure yeah. you'll find it. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And so how involved are you? Are you part of like the founding members or... Just I, like I came no, I think uh, I think that Chandra and Natalie mm -hmm. and Jessica Chastain and, and Bree and America and a few others started it initially, and then they started doing more meetings, and yeah, that's when we came great. in. I think I it's came awesome. in a month or two into it. It's amazing, awesome. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for being a support of that and helping create more equality. That's what of we course. need. It's yeah. awesome. I'm curious to know about. You know, the more I've been researching it, we met, I think we met about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago mm -hmm. through Julianne, who's, who's been on the show yeah. at Brooks, and we were, And know, I just noticed you know, that she's, she's up there. Right yeah, yeah, I have her staring you. at you, yes. I love it, it makes me feel more comfortable when we're best friends in the room. You're at home, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're incredible people, and uh, when I met you, I just knew that you would be incredible as well if you're connecting with her, just because mm -hmm. she's got a big heart, so. Um, I feel like good people, or like-minded people, yeah, find each other. Of course, yeah. And they attract each other, and yeah. the moment that I met Julianne, we were best friends. Yeah. And you're right, she's positive and happy, and, she, and that's infectious. When you're around her, you want to be a better person, mm -hmm. you want to be happy, you want to smile with her, and so it's it's hard to, to not be around her. Yeah. And yeah. we got to spend some time together, more time together uh, at their wedding and mm -hmm. did some acro yoga with my girlfriend mm -hmm. and kind of teach some of that. So we have some cool photos. We'll have to link up to show people. Um, that was so fun. It was a fun time, right? I didn't know that I could. Okay. You did. But you were great. Um, I didn't know that I could do. I mean, I used to do gymnastics and yeah. I dance a lot. So 
I just didn't know that we could do all that cool <laughs> stuff. And you lifted me into positions and places that I didn't know my body could It was go. great. You were amazing. Thank you. You are natural. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me that. Of that course, really of course, yeah. Um, <laughs> and you, I'm curious to know this, because you moved from Bulgaria when you were two to Canada. What part of Canada was that? Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. And um, it's so funny. I'm from there, and I said Toronto, and you're like, "Yeah, Toronto." Toronto, which is the, <laughs> how the you more say it, right? Torontonian yeah. way to say it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I was just I was just up there, so that's what they said to me. Um, but when you guys moved to, to Toronto, you weren't really well off early on, right? You got mm, were no. kind of like scrapping around, trying to figure things out. Immigrant, you know, mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we my parents left Bulgaria right around when the wall fell. Mm -hmm. It was a communist occupied country and yeah. people weren't allowed to leave the country until that happened. In fact, when my parents got married, it's a crazy story, they they wanted to go on a honeymoon and go travel somewhere else, but you were only allowed to visit other communist countries. So if you went somewhere else, you had to give something to the government as insurance that you would come back. Wow. So they gave my brother to them. No way. Yeah, they went away for two weeks, gave my brother as insurance that they would come back. What do you mean? They came back. He had to go to like a home or something? I, and I, can't, I don't remember the exact details. I'd have to ask my mom, but oh my something goodness. like that. Yeah, you have to like give up your child so that... They, or say if you don't come back, your child's going to like the military or something. Something, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. And even my dad, I think, I'm pretty sure he, like you had to go to the military. And if you didn't, you had to, it was either military or jail. So my dad ended up going to jail for a little while. No way. To avoid having to join the military, yeah. Crazy wow. stuff like that. And it's so, it's so nuts to me because like that's not the world that I grew up in. I was fortunate enough to not have to experience that because I was born right when the wall fell. Mm -hmm. And um, I think my dad went, like I said, you had to visit other communist countries. So he booked a ticket to Cuba, which is also communist. And then the flight from Bulgaria to Cuba is so long that the plane had to refuel in Toronto or Ottawa or somewhere. And he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, trying to look like he was on vacation because he was afraid that they'd find out right. that he wasn't actually going to Cuba. And when the plane stopped to refuel, he just never got back on it. So underneath the Hawaiian shirt, he was wearing like layers upon layers of warm clothing because it was winter in Canada. And that's Holy how he cow. got into Canada. No way. Yeah. That's Wait, so how, how did you guys come over then? So then we, my mom, my brother and I applied, I, I mean, my mom applied for my brother and sure. I, uh, for a visa to visit our family in Michigan, I believe. And so we flew to Michigan for a, a week it was supposed to be. And then from there, they drove us to the Canadian-American border where wow. my mom, with one suitcase, a six-year-old and a two-year-old in her arms, walked across the Niagara Falls border. Shut up. And that's how we got in. Walked across? Walked across. Like, There's a bridge that you walk across from Canada to America. Was it like a customs checkpoint or was it more of like a I sneak two, across? I think, yeah. no, I th I'm pretty sure it was a sneak across. Really? Yeah. But I'm not, a, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Wow. But I don't don't quote quote me on right, that right, because sure. I have to. You have to ask your mom. <laughs> yeah, I, I was little. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. I personally don't remember any of these things. Wow, but it's amazing. So did you guys have? Yeah. Did your parents have savings, or did they have a place to stay when they got to Canada, or was it more? I think there was. We shared an apartment with another family or two other families. Bulgarian family, or yeah, mm -hmm. and until we figured out what we were gonna do. Um, I mean, wow. all I did was just say gaga and doo doo and right. I wasn't doing much but so I can't take credit but my dad worked as a pizza delivery guy he worked at a gas station as a pumper uh -huh. they took odd jobs like that at the beginning they had nothing they didn't speak the language um, and then as time went on they started to learn and started to get better jobs and my mom was a painter but my dad learned to become a computer specialist wow and yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that they that's they had to go through so much to get here to give us the life that we had. Yeah. And as a child, I remember feeling ungrateful too really? for that. Yeah, I mean, you cuz I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we were you didn't know what they had to give up or what to, they had to sacrifice to get me to where yeah. I was and and I went to a good public school and all my friends had all these things. They had like beautiful new clothes and these ha like big houses and I always felt like and we also weren't allowed to speak English at home we had to speak Bulgarian at home and English at school so that we c could preserve our mm -hmm. our mother tongue and um, 
and I hated that. And I thought that was so annoying, and I would rebel against it. And I was like, why didn't I? Why, why can't I have new clothes like my friends do? Why do we have to go to Salvation Army to buy our clothes? Yeah. I just, I didn't. I hated it. Um, but now that I am where I am. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that I speak multiple languages. Right, and you speak three, right? Three languages, yeah. French well, four is, if you count Pig Latin. <laughs> Pig Latin. Um, French yeah. as well, right? French, English, Bulgarian, and Pig Latin. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Maverick, your yes, dog. Yes, <laughs> my dog, my, my baby girl. Yeah, exactly. Literally, my baby, uh, having a puppy is like having a child. I know. That's why I don't have one because <laughs> I don't think I would get anything done in my life. <laughs> I want one. When I'm around yours, I'm like, I could be with this dog all day long. But then I would do nothing else with my life. I'm surprised you didn't bring her here. I figured you'd I, bring her. I would have, except she's sick right now. <laughs> oh, okay, it's probably better. So she, I didn't want yeah. her to be outside in the rain and of course. risk getting a cold. Of course. Yeah. Now, I'm curious. Now, your parents, uh, you know, they went through a lot to get you here, mm -hmm. and your brother. What's the greatest? But yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. I didn't uh, get a chance to say that um, th when I was younger, I hated it, and that, that was difficult. But if I didn't have that experience of wanting things mm -hmm. and, and not having things that I wanted, it made me work extra hard to achieve and and get what I wanted to have in my life. Yeah, you know, and I, I feel like a lot of people don't understand that now we have so many things to at our disposal running water is so easy to just get and we take that for granted mm -hmm. and like I went I went to Kenya to build a school for um, build a school and a well and yeah. that's what that's that's when I learned that lesson I was like wow I can't believe that we have such so many things around us and, and so many people don't and so many people can get in their cars and go from A to B and we, we have so much and everyone's so lucky and that's a great thing but it's also sometimes will, can be a disadvantage for some people yeah. in my opinion. Of course. Yeah. The struggle is what makes you thrive for success so in did my you, opinion. Did you have this hunger to work hard at an early age then because you wanted certain, you wanted nicer clothes or? Well I just didn't, yeah I mean I had to have, I had to get a job to buy myself clothes. I right. had to buy my own first car and um, I'm definitely gonna make my kids do the same thing, even though I have the ability to, to provide that for them. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for them to work for it. And yeah, I had to do chores true. growing up. I had to, um, when I, we, my parents couldn't afford to put me in a lot of like dance classes and things yeah. like that. But we, they would throw me into like the community ones and it created this. The free ones, yeah. The free ones, yeah. yeah. And then eventually when I started acting or it started with modeling and then I t it turned into acting. They didn't approve of it. They didn't have the money to support it. Mm -hmm. So with my jobs, I would pay for the headshots and I would go take classes mm -hmm. and take four different buses and a subway to get downtown from the suburbs in Toronto where I lived yeah. to get to the class. Like it ha I wanted it. And mm -hmm. if, like if I didn't actually put in the work for it, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am. And yeah. And it really had to be from within, you know? What was the greatest lesson you think both your mom and dad taught you then? The greatest lesson? I mean, they taught me so many lessons. <sighs> My dad was very strict growing up. Again, all, all the things that I didn't appreciate at the time mm -hmm. that now I hated, do. now yeah. I appreciate it. They made me... Um, they made me read a book every single week and I had to put, like outside of school, I would have to read a book for them and write a report for them. Mm -hmm. And then if, if I had done that, I was allowed to go on to auditions the following week. If I hadn't finished doing that, then I wasn't allowed to, to go. Huh. So they, they basically didn't think that the acting thing was real and serious and they didn't want me to stop studying and trying to become, have another, a backup basically. Mm -hmm. So, so they wanted to see how bad you wanted it. Exactly. And you were willing to they do made, that then. Exactly. They made mm. me work for it. And That's same great. thing with college. I had to go to college. If I didn't go to college, I couldn't continue acting. So I, And you were on a hit show during college, right? I was under Grassy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was a hit show in Canada. So you're acting. Yeah, I mean, you're a working actor at that point. But towards the end. Got it. So I did have like a, I had a full childhood before. Okay. I was working in the last two years, but of nothing, college. it didn't come out until after <clears throat> I was. Got it. Mostly after. So I you're was mostly doing like smaller jobs or just auditioning during that time. Yes, exactly. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, did you go to school in Toronto then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did and University I, of Toronto or? No, I went to Ryerson University. Okay. I didn't finish. After a while, like I, I ended up getting so much work and my studying yeah. started to suffer and then my acting started to suffer. I couldn't really do both. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I'd proven that I was serious about it and yeah. that it was going well and it was I was able to provide for myself. Yeah. And I think that's what they were worried about the most is... Once the, once the checks started coming in, they're like, okay. They're like, okay. <laughs> go do this. I, at first I deferred and I was like, I'll go back next, sem next uh -huh. semester. And then I kept working and I was like, hey, next year. And then next year and it's been... 10 now yeah. so I don't I don't know if that I'll go back or yeah. if I do maybe down the line but yeah for fun yeah, yeah. what about your mom's the greatest lesson she taught you mom's greatest lesson um, love I mean she is such a loving caring person and mm. she's always been there for me my dad wasn't as supportive my mom was more supportive but in the whole work acting thing, but um, I think it's so important to be surrounded by love as a child and have that feeling. And I, I thought that was normal. And then as I grew up, I saw other friends and people around me that didn't have that support mm -hmm. system. And it, she, she taught me how to be the person I am and hopefully continue to inspire that love and yeah. kindness to other people. Yeah. What yeah. about the biggest insecurity you had growing up? Wait, in fact, sorry, just yeah, to go, go back to that. Yeah. In fact, one of the, my favorite, I don't know if it's her quote or somebody, she heard it from someone else, but she told me this quote that was, be nice to all the people on your way up because you'll be seeing them on your way down. Mm -hmm. So if that shows you what kind of person my mom is, she's like yeah. tough, but real. And she's like, be good to everyone because everyone yeah. around you, they help you get to that next phase of your life. Yeah. Do you feel like you were good to everyone on your way up to where you are? I tried. Yeah. I, I definitely have tried. I mean, I'm human. I'm sure I've made a lot of mistakes over my life and my career, and there's probably people that I've hurt, but um, mm -hmm. never intentionally. Yeah. Never with malice. Mm hmm. Uh, hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm sure you've been great. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you ever have any big insecurities growing up? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm human. I'm a girl. Right. <laughs> I have probably a million insecurities. Uh, I have weird feet. I, um, I, at one point, I cut my hair really short, like a boy, like your length, mm -hmm. essentially. Really? Yeah, because my mom told me that she did it when she was younger, and suddenly she realized who her real friends were because uh. a bunch of people thought she didn't look the same and thought she was weird, and then... Her true friends, the ones that stuck with her at that point, stayed with her for life. And I thought that was really hmm. cool, so I did it. And it was very true. I got people called me a boy. They said I was ugly. Yeah. I had to wear dresses so that people would think. So you're not a boy. So that yeah. they would know that I was a girl. Yeah. And wow. um, and it was tough, but it was also it hardened me in a good way. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize that that it's yeah. What would you say is the biggest? insecurity you've overcome over the last decade in your 20s maybe that you were holding on to as a teen going in your 20s and now you've realized it's not necessary to hold on to anymore caring kind of but not in the way that you probably think I mean I care a lot but I also caring about the right things mm. and I mean I think everybody goes through this I, I I'd be, I'm confident, I say this with confidence, that every single person when they're in their teens, in their early 20s, they, they care so much about other people and how they're perceived and what impression they make. And I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be good at everything and be a good student and be prettier and skinnier and um, successful and all these things and I, I cared about what people said about me and how they felt about me and, and as I get older I just realize that that is that won't other people won't make me happy it has to be from within me and I need to keep doing whatever makes me happy and whoever responds to that great whoever doesn't respond to that it's fine too mm -hmm. um, but the less I care about other people's opinions the better I feel about myself and the more I do things that make me happy mm. Amen yeah. to that. I like that one. Yeah. Um, I think I read somewhere that you 
have watched the movie The Secret. Is that right? Uh, no, I read the read book. The book. Yes. Okay, you read the book. Yes. What, um, who or what has taught you the most about living an abundant life? Was it that book or has it been something else that you've learned along the way about abundance in your life? I think that, um, that, that book definitely inspired me when I read it. Yeah. It was, I, I was in high school when I read it and it, it's true. I mean, whenever, if you put your mind to something, it's such a powerful thing yeah. that you can really achieve anything you want. And if you put that energy out there, whatever energy you put out there, it usually comes back to you. So I believe so much in energy work and just being around people that are positive mm -hmm. and sort of like cutting out people that are not positive in your life. And once I decided, I, I, I read the book and realized that I'd sort of been living like that anyway. Like that whole, that fiery. It confirmed it, yeah. Yeah, that fiery mm -hmm. determined sort of like, I don't have this, so how do I get it? By doing X, Y, and Z. Right. So why not just do X, Y, and Z? <laughs> yeah. And I just already had that mentality, but once I saw it in writing and read the book, and was like, wow, this is what I do and it's working. So just keep doing it. Just figure it out and keep following your dreams and keep not taking no for an answer. Because I really am um, kind of, people in my, my closest friends and my mom and my closest confidants always say that I'm very determined and very stubborn and pushy and that, <laughs> that it could be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Like it definitely gets me what I want, what I want and need and I'm very vocal about things and blunt. But, um, but you sort of have to be that way. You have to be your own um, your own agent, your own advocate, mm -hmm. and your own, you have to go for what you want Absolutely. in life. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you always see yourself, you know, being a star on shows and movies and things like that when you were a teenager or what was the dream for you? No, not at all. I mean, I, I don't, I wasn't one of those kids that knew I wanted to be an actor. I don't think. I don't, I just sort of wanted to keep doing things that made me like they were fun, basically. Yeah, yeah. I think that was fun, and I, um, like I said earlier, my parents would just throw me, probably because I had too much energy, and they didn't know <laughs> yeah. what to do with me. They would just throw me in all these community classes. They tried me out with ballet and tap and jazz and um, all these things, and I knew that I loved to perform and loved to like dance and do things with my body. And I was a gymnast for a while. I don't think it was until I went to a performing arts high school where I did theater and dance more seriously, mm -hmm. that's when I really fell in love with acting. Wow. But even before that, actually no, even before that, my mom tells me the story about when we were in some train in Europe or something and um, she'd fallen asleep on the train, I think, and when she woke up, I wasn't next to her anymore. So she walked down to the other side of the train and saw me and I was talking to a stranger and when she got to him, she realized that I'd told him a different name I had an English accent, wow. and I was I'd made up this whole backstory, and and I was lying to him basically, and I loved doing that. I loved going places and talking to strangers and making up fake stories and just sort of seeing if they'll believe me and how far I could take it before they realized that it wasn't true. And so I guess that's mm. subconsciously before I even knew that I was that I wanted to be an actor that I wanted to be an actor. Why do you love doing characters? That? Why do you love that creating characters? I love being other people and trying to figure out their mindset and what makes them tick and why they do things and and their backstory, just like creating a backstory and becoming a different mm. person is so interesting to me. And that's why, I, even though, like I, I told you that I had to go to college, that was one of the requirements for my parents, that's why I took psychology and sociology because I wanted to hmm. understand people and how they tick better. Wow. Mm. Did you realize that when the, when the show happened, Vampire Diaries, when that mm -hmm. happened, was that something that you were expecting or was it more like, wow, this unexpectedly happened and I'm really shocked and surprised? Or the was, success of it? Or yeah, I think that getting I the it. role oh, getting and, it. Then, <laughs> and then like the success of it. I've actually never watched it, but I remember hearing like- What? <laughs> How dare you? I'm leaving right now. This is unacceptable. No, but I remember hearing You're everyone- You're not exactly the demographic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I remember hearing about everyone like raving about this big you know, show. And so when you landed it, did you know it was going to be this big hit? And, yeah. At the time, it was the pilot to get. It was, so we, yeah. we, I mean, Twilight had just come out. Uh -huh. We were, we would, probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Twilight. Right. Uh, it was a massive success. So 
But at the same time, we also didn't know if it would really take off because when you have something like Twilight, you're like, wait, is, the, is it oversaturated? Uh, True mm. Blood was was out on the air as well. And that was a big hit too, right? That was a huge yeah. hit. So we were we were the third one, I think, in line. So I was like, well, is, is there too much vampire stuff? Is mm -hmm. it going to bomb? We didn't want it to. We obviously wanted it to do well, but we didn't know. And so it was a gamble in many wow. ways. Yeah. And when it started to take off, what was it like for you getting all the recognition and the acknowledgments and opportunities? Did you feel like you were ready for that? I, it was a blessing in disguise, I think, because we filmed in Atlanta. We weren't. You weren't in LA or? Weren't in LA. We'd get we'd invited to all these big award shows and parties and things. Couldn't and, go. And we, we were filming, we were working. <laughs> we were in another state. And yeah. um, I remember being bummed that I couldn't go to this or that or whatever it might be. But I think it was best that I didn't because I got to keep being a professional and keep working mm -hmm. and not be distracted by parties and and events and things like that. It was it was all about the work and um, and I didn't have the opportunity. Not that I want it. I definitely don't want it. But I didn't I wasn't going out to clubs and doing that yeah. whole thing that young young actors on successful TV shows do. Right. That end up sort of spiraling <clears throat> them into a, a bad direction or in a bad crowd. Mm -hmm. When I did come to LA, I would meet people like Julianne, or I'd meet, or I would meet the good eggs and the bad eggs. But then I could recognize that. Sure. And then whenever the bad eggs would text me to hang out, and oh God, I'd busy. be like, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> I can't. Maybe next time. And then eventually they'd go. So away. I'll know next time I text you if you respond to me or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I say I'm in Atlanta, then you know that <laughs> I'm exactly. avoiding you. Exactly. <laughs> um, that's not true. I really was in Atlanta for six years, so there even, even some <laughs> good people that I did want to hang out with, I couldn't. But exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you had, I feel like the sun is coming out. Look at this. It's getting brighter in here. It's getting brighter and brighter. The rain is going away. It's like the cleansing. Yeah, I love this happening. transition. <laughs> Transformation is unfolding the, uh, in front of our eyes. Um, when you were in the, you know, the success of the show, six seasons. Is that right? You, I, I left after six seasons, but the show six continued for on you, to for eight. Went on for eight. Mm -hmm. During the success of the six seasons. Did you always know you wanted to leave and go do something either different or I wouldn't say bigger or better because it was a huge hit, but like just a different transition for you? Or did you, what was your mentality? Were you just focused on the role and the show or did you always have bigger visions? I always knew that I was, um that I was going to leave after six seasons. And it wasn't fulfilling your creativity anymore. I mean, it was just, it was great. It was just that I'd been doing it for six years. If you yeah. do anything for six years, it, it'll, um, you just want to be challenged in different ways. And, mm -hmm. and like I told you earlier, the, I was creating different characters as a kid and wanting to be different people all the time. So that's what this is for me. Yeah. And you were bored with Telling, one person. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, I actually played four characters on the show. Oh, wow. So I was, to be in that situation, I was very lucky and I sure. loved the characters that I played. I loved the people I worked with. But I wanted to play more characters and I wanted to tell more stories. and. And I, I have ambitions to produce and write and basically take over the world. Right. So um, I had to, I had to, I knew I had to move on eventually. Yeah. So this was a couple of years ago, right? Yes. Right before 27 or at 27? It was, I think it was right before 27, uh -huh. yeah. Now when you left the show, did you imagine that all these big movie opportunities and other TV shows were going to open up to you? Or what was your expectation leaving? And what actually happened, based on your expectation? My my hope was to do more movies and tell stories and and, and keep doing that. And luckily, knock on wood, it's it's been going really well, and yeah. I've, uh, the hard work has been paying off. And and I've been working a lot, and it's been great. But of course, there was that that period after I left when you're used to being on it, working every day, all day for six mm -hmm. years. And I took a couple months off to myself to travel and sort of press the ref the reset button and refresh button. But then I got antsy really quick. Mm -hmm, I was like, yeah. I gotta do this. <laughs> and the weird part was like I remember reading this, this this horrible article where they were like, Nina Dobrev, where is she now? I was like, What do you mean? Like I it's been like four months. <laughs> or or no, maybe it was a year later. Yeah, it was a year later. And I'd shot three movies. I'd done triple X. Um, wow. I think Triple X, Flatliners, and like something else, maybe an indie movie. Oh, yeah, Crash Bad, an indie movie. And then the article came out, and they're like, Nina Dobrev, where is she now? And then I realized that, yeah, it's true. Like, for two years, 
essentially nobody had seen me on camera any mm -hmm. when they were, were used working. to seeing me but I was, yeah I was, I was making the movies but they hadn't come out yet mm. so they basically thought that I'd died and yeah. um, and then now things have, have started to come out and yeah. I'm still shooting stuff but um, but yeah it is, it is weird to okay. think that so the opportunities are coming it's not like a, a lack of opportunities for the things you want to do no I'm, but it is hard it is hard when people see yeah. you as one character and, mm. and you're known for something it's hard to to, to change that perception. Yeah, I had a, I don't know if you know Jenna Ushkowitz. Yeah, she was on Glee, I love Jenna, yeah. And she came on about a year and a half or two years after the show was over. And mm. it was, sounds similar story. It was like a huge hit, you know, she's working every single day. It was one of the biggest shows on TV at the time. Huge, yeah. Huge, and then she was talking about the struggle having this identity and this character and then being challenging to get into rooms and to get auditions. It's like, yeah. and she kind of struggled a lot to get opportunities. But you haven't found that to no, be the I mean, case. It's, it's, it, no, that's not true. I, to say that I didn't struggle is, is absolutely, I'd be lying to myself and to right. everyone around me. It was, if I told you how many vampire movies and werewolf movies I'd been offered after, like there really? were, there wasn't a lack of opportunity, but it wasn't the opportunities that I wanted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the path that I wanted to go in for the huge movies and the 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 Christopher Nolans of the world mm. and Steven Spielberg's. Like those rooms, those are the rooms I want to get into, and those are the rooms that are hard to get into because you're already people know people know me as Lana Gilbert. And it's, it's hard, like, just like the way right now, if I were to go on the street and try to make up a name. fake story. No, oh. when I was a kid, nobody knew who I was. So I could tell a stranger that my name was um, Gertrude and that I was English and from the countryside to make up this big story. But it's harder for me to do that now when, when people know who you are. Right. Um, so <clears throat> hmm. there... They see you as one thing. Yeah. It's hard for them to see you as anything else. Yeah. Even if you play the other characters well. Yeah, and so so it's been it's been um, it's been a struggle in that way, but um, it's been an uphill battle. Yeah. And bit by bit, the more work I do and the more I diversify that, um, go into auditions and fight for it, and and it's 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 been working, but it's it. Took a while to get to this point. Yeah, of course. And a lot of things are born from frustration, in my opinion. So that sort like of times up. Like time, exactly. Yeah. Like times up, and and that feeling of of not being able to get into a room because somebody thought I was just the girl from that show mm -hmm. um, frustrated me. And so that's why I started producing and writing my own stuff and creating the characters that I want to play. If somebody else can't see me as that or won't give me that chance to prove that I can be this person, I'm just gonna make it myself and I'll show you that I can make okay. it. So you're making a lot of more shorts, short films or well, so series? Well, so I went into Funny or Die and I pitched them an idea mm -hmm. I had for um, for a sketch because I was so frustrated with, with Trump and the political climate and, and I was just disgusted by the whole thing and and came up with this idea about a wife coach. Cause like how does his wife <laughs> stand next to him and right. do that interview that she did and defend him when he's seen on camera and heard on camera saying these things. Like, mm -hmm. how do you defend that? I, but somehow she does. So I was like, there, there's gotta be a person behind the scenes that's like coaching her through how to not, you know, how to not break and how to support right. him. So right. I was like, what if it's, what if I became this like Russian, this Russian um, wife coach that coaches all the wives to, to, to men who need their wives to stay in line. And so... <laughs> I okay. watched it this morning, it's really funny. It's, yeah, it's very funny. Yeah, it's, but yeah, so like I, I made that and I, I mm -hmm. want to do more comedy, for example. And for yeah. the longest time, people were like, oh no, she was on a serious like vampire show. She can't, she's not funny. I was like, okay, well, let me show you. Like, let's, mm -hmm. let's create these new characters and step outside the box and be seen in a different light and right. as a different character and put a wig on me, age me, make me ugly, I'll wear no makeup, I'll do whatever it takes. Like, yeah. this is what I love and I want to follow it through. Mm. So are you writing the whole thing? It's your ideas? Do you bring a partner in and help writing? Or? In, in that case, I, I didn't write it, no. Um, the, the, a team of female writers oh, wow. on the Funny or Die staff wrote that sketch. Um, I was part of the approval, like I picked uh, JJ, who's also a female director, to direct it. Wow. And I've, I've been creatively involved in 
like from the pitch to every every phase of the process, in, including the editing process, and 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 now it's out. Now it's out. It came out yeah. yesterday, today. When did it yeah, come this out? morning. It came morning, out yeah. this morning. But yeah, it also like right. that's just one thing. I mean, yeah. I have a, a couple of other. I'm producing a, a couple of films. With some it hasn't been announced yet, but sure, sure. But, it's great, um, but you're constantly working on the things you want to do yeah. if you're not getting in the rooms or getting the opportunities that you want. I mean, now I'm getting in the rooms, but <clears throat> sure. it, took, it, it took a while, yeah. And I wrote my first movie. The whole thing? Yep, 120 Complete. pages, yeah. That you would star in, essentially? It's like a movie for you I, or more I, producing? Initially, right? I wrote it as a vehicle for myself, yes. Um, but but wow. I don't know, I might want to I might want to direct it, I might want to... Wow. Um, we'll see what happens, but That's I'm cool. very proud of it. So would you say that you enjoy more uh, being the character telling the story or directing the stories and just having stories out there? I I think it's just the story is the most important thing. I mean, you can't... It, it doesn't matter how... For example, like that's how I choose my roles. Like I don't, if you have a great director but you have a bad story, it's not going to work. If your character is amazing in a in a movie that has an, an okay story, but a and a great director, it's also not going to work. Like it always comes mm. down to you have to have like the trifecta of the story director and the role. And um, I don't know where I was going with this. Making sure the story's out there, getting the story yeah, out the story. There. And, yeah. and and to be honest with you, I I always knew that I wanted to produce and direct and and enter that phase of my career, but it wasn't until the last few years when A, I had more time on my mm -hmm. hands. When you're shooting 10 episode, uh, 22 episodes a year for an hour long for 10 months, it's That's like a lot. all you all you want to do is go to bed at the yeah. end of the night. You don't yeah. have time to like Get put your pizza energy. and ice cream and sleep. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> So now that I have more time to do that, mm. I didn't realize how fulfilling it is and how fun it is to be part of the behind the scenes process. Yeah. And also maybe because it's new, maybe because it's something sure. that I haven't yeah. done until now. It just feels like the world's my oyster and yeah. I can create anything with anyone. And it's, it's, it is a different kind of joy that, I, cool. that, I, that I get. Different type it. of creative yeah. creativity too. It's a different muscle that I get to exercise. You said this, in, I think it was the Harper's Bazaar article you said the things I want to do aren't necessarily the things that are expected of me mm. I don't know if you remember saying that I do remember saying okay that. Um, what is the thing you want to do next um, I think in that regard I was talking we were talking about the movies and the roles mm -hmm. like the things that that come to me aren't necessarily the things that I want to do like yeah. I don't more more often than not I turn down movies and I have to go into the room and fight for the ones that I really, really mm -hmm. want. But what do I want to do next? I want to direct next. Yeah. I want to continue producing. And what's the story that hasn't been traveling. told? The traveling. Um, what's the story that hasn't been told that you want to tell? Ooh, oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, oh, I like this. Sorry. Side note. Yeah. Hashtag girl boss. Yeah. Love it. Um, there's so many stories that haven't been told that need to be told. I mean, I think there we can make a movie about Time's Up. Yeah. This movement that's happening right now. Yeah. Um, I want to do an Audrey Hepburn biopic. I've always wanted to do that. Because you always get said that you look like her or what? Uh, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be very flattered if somebody said that I look like her. She's my idol. I love her. Yeah. Um, what is it about women? who? Why, why do so many women love her? What is it about her that... Because she's she's the epitome of class and and just she's funny. She doesn't take herself seriously. She's self-deprecating. She's mm. beautiful. She's sophisticated. She's timeless. She, mm. There's just something about her. She's she's the woman that I aspire to be. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel like you're those things yet? I'm trying every day to to become that. What do you think is holding you back from being that or being the woman you want to be? Oh, goodness. I think I've been a girl for a long time. I think when I became 27, that's when everything started, started to shift for me. That's when I started to realize, have you heard of this? There's like a thing about 27 mm -hmm. that yeah. up until 27, you can be the best, like the top of your class and you could be an overachiever. But as soon as you hit 27, 
nobody really cares anymore and you're like just like everybody else yeah. and so you're you going above and beyond is normal like everybody's going above and beyond like it's just not so there's like a reality check in a way and time starts to become apparent and it really became apparent for me I, I I started to realize that I've achieved a lot but I've also f haven't fulfilled my potential and there's so many things I want to do I want to do the things that we discuss like mm -hmm. producing and directing and realize my power and realize that I can do that yeah. and it took me so long to to realize that I could be in that position I could direct something I could produce something people will take me seriously and then the other phase was family honestly I think the only thing stopping me from becoming a woman is being with my family more and making them more of a priority. Being with your family more and making that a priority? Making mm -hmm. them a priority and, you know, I was never a person who wanted to have, I didn't think when I was younger that I wanted to have kids or get married or any of that kind of stuff. And as I get older, I know that that is something that is important to me. I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, before this becomes a thing, and I'm people are like, she's so getting married, <laughs> having babies. No, I used to. I used to, the way you felt about Maverick, where you're like, I love playing with her, but yeah. I love giving her back to you. <laughs> I feel. I used to feel the same with kids, and now, mm. now I just like I understand that that's what the next phase is, and that's what it's about, and caring for something. Now that I have a dog, and I care for her more than I care about myself. It's that that feeling feels mm. is so much better than anything else. Yeah, I think I've been selfish up until this point, and now it's time to be selfless mm. going forward with the next chapter. So you think that'll be that's the thing that's holding you back from getting to the person you want to be, is being more selfless. I mean, or uh, yeah, maybe just being more, yeah, being more selfless and and my priorities shifting. I mm -hmm. think they are in the process of shifting right yeah. now. Yeah, it's great. Into something that's bigger than I am. Sure. You know. What's the greatest piece of advice you've heard from maybe someone you've looked up to, another actor, or another director, or someone in this, this space, the Hollywood space, mm. who's had a great career, doesn't matter, male, female, doesn't matter, um, but they just mm. gave you a piece of advice or one sentence they said to you maybe when you were just starting out or yesterday where you were like you know what that is a really good piece of advice mm. about how to sustain your career or how to you know stay fulfilled through the height of it all because you've had a ton of attention you know millions of followers has anyone given you something good valuable yeah many uh yeah um i'm just trying to think of which one to tell you about. <laughs> uh, i read an interview with meryl streep where she said her big best advice for actors was when in doubt take fountain <laughs> the actual road. The street. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not in LA, you won't understand. You won't that. know what that means, but, but yeah, I've taken so, fountain many times. There's so much traffic in LA <laughs> that that is really some, some great advice. That's a good piece um, of advice. But no, I. That's funny. I, I think that stopping to really appreciate everything that you have, and not just trying to get to the next thing and, and yeah. like planning like I got to do this and this and this and this and this and then I'll be happy. Because I did, everybody does that. You think you need to have certain things to achieve greatness, mm -hmm. and then you keep going day by day, and then you miss those those little things that are actually what the reason we're here. Yeah. And I somebody told me that at the very beginning to sort of celebrate the little successes yeah. along the way, and and I really do think that's important mm -hmm. and I do try to sort of yeah. stop and breathe breathe <laughs> and appreciate the many amazing things that I have in my life and the great amazing people that I have in my life and make traveling a priority so yeah. that it's not like I'm this this world this industry is amazing but it's not the only thing I live for mm -hmm. I don't sit at home and just like wait for the phone to ring right. I'm usually jumping off of a plane and the phone's ringing in my pocket, and then when I land, I'm like, oh, my agent called. Like, I, it's so important to have other things yeah. going on and have be fulfilled in, in other ways. And, sure. And that, that has kept me sane-ish. Yeah, sure. Because we're all kind of crazy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What's the thing you're most proud of that you've done that most people don't know about you? 
you know, you've got big hit star with all these shows and movies and directing, and, uh, you know, done all these things, campaigns that you've done with brands, but what's something maybe smaller or maybe something you haven't really shared? Oh, gosh. That you're really proud of that you did or that you do on a consistent basis? Hmm. I mean, we talked about the, when I went to Africa and built mm -hmm. the school, that was a pretty life-changing experience. Yeah. I was really proud of that. Because I feel like I really, we, it was a group of us, so I didn't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. Sure. We hopefully changed some lives and, yeah. and brought clean water to a community that didn't have it. And as much as I feel like we affected their lives, they also affected my life. And experiencing, seeing those kids who had nothing yeah. but smiled bigger than I did, mm -hmm. having everything here in North America and seeing the little things that made them happy made me appreciate. Yeah. And I, and I did that when I was 17, so. Wow. So it really, like, that experience of traveling and experiencing another, another culture and another part of the world, I can't stress how important it is for kids to, like, get out of their little bubble and, mm -hmm. and see other worlds and other people's lives and, it really puts things into perspective. Yeah. You know? What's the most meaningful thing in your life right now? The most meaningful thing in my life right now, I mean, I can't not say Maverick. She's, she's, <laughs> she's a baby. She's my kid. Yeah, exactly. She's my kid. Yeah. But also my friendships. Yeah. My friendships. You've got some great friends, yeah. Yeah. I've seen you guys interact, all your friends, so. Yeah. It's fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you went to the wedding. Yeah, it was great. It's, it's such a, like, I mean, that's their life. That's Julianne and Brooks' uh -huh. entire existence. And I feel like we all, Aaron and Lauren are the same. And just like being mm -hmm. in that sort of bubble of happiness, positivity, and joy, like that, just being there, you could feel the love. It was palpable. The energy was in the air. And mm -hmm. um, celebrating love yeah. is so. It was great. It was fun. Addictive in a way. Yeah. You know? What's the, we've got a couple questions left for you. Um, what's a question you wish more people would ask you, but they never ask? Hmm. I can tell you a question I wish people wouldn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I haven't asked it. Uh, that no. one. <laughs> um, I just, I wish it was more, I think I might be moving to New York soon. Mm. God, I love New York. Yeah. It's so good. It's, it's... I lived there for a year and a half. It's well, so such you know. a magical experience. I've never spent more than five to seven days oh, there. It's hard to leave. I had somebody actually uh, ask me when... The, I told them I wanted to live there, and they said, how, like, have you ever... How long have you been there? And I said five to seven days. And they're like, oh, that's why you, that's why you love it so much because you don't really know it yet. No. It's, it's a tough, and it's true. It's a tough city. It's um, no, nah, you love it. You thrive. You're a go getter. I yeah. You would love it. But I, uh, I wish there was more conversations that were meaningful mm -hmm. and thoughtful and not industry driven all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And um, I I, I, I want to be challenged and cultivated by different sort of opinions and perspectives and and that's why I'm looking forward to going to New York yeah, and, be fun. and meeting lots of random yeah. people and having interesting conversations with strangers. You're gonna love it. Yeah. You get so many good character ideas, development yes, ideas too. exactly. Um, this is a question called the three truths that we ask everyone at the end. Okay. So imagine that it's the last day for you you know, you're a hundred and something years old oh and you've gosh. achieved everything you want. Every vision, goal, dream, it's all come true. Every movie you wanted to direct, act in, create, giving back, whatever, the family, everything has happened. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, all the content and material put out there has been erased. So no one can watch it anymore. So you've achieved it all, but no one has access to watch it. Now everyone's there. It's your last day. You're peaceful. You're, you had a great life and it's about to be over, right? They're all there celebrating you, and they say, we don't have access to anything that you've shared. All your content is gone, your films, TV, everything you've done. But here's a paper, piece of paper and a pen. And we want you to write down three truths, the three things that you know to be true about everything you've learned, all your experiences that you would pass on to us. Wow. Three lessons or three truths 
And this is all people would have to remember you by, except for their own memory, but no, no other content. What would you say are your three truths? I find it to be true that laughter is the only cure for, for sadness and hard mm. times. Yeah. Um, and that if you surround yourself around people that are, that will keep you laughing and keep you in good spirits, then really everything else can disappear and you can have nothing but if you have family and laughter that you'll be set mm -hmm. and good and you'll get through whatever tough time that you're about to experience or have experienced. Yeah. Because I've been there. Yeah. And it just, all it's taken is a phone call and a breakdown um, and a conversation with somebody that I love that I know supports me to, to get me back up. Um, that was one. Yes, <laughs> laughter. I love it. Laughter. <laughs> um, Second truth. It's kind of similar because it's about the people around you. Mm -hmm. um, I find it to be true that if you surround yourself with people that will tell you the things you don't want to hear, you will have a better life. So if you surround mm. yourself around people who won't kiss your ass, won't um, compliment you all the time, like if like I, I want, I want somebody, like I want to walk out into a room and be like, hey, what do you think about this hat? And for them to say it's fugly, take it off. <laughs> um, and I do. Um, my friends are like that. My family's like that. My mom is my worst critic. Um, she can be brutal. I remember uh, in high school, I got into a fight with one of my girlfriends, and she. Uh, I explained to her what the situation was. I was crying, and then, and my mom said, "Well, okay, but like, think about it from her perspective. Like, this is what you did, and maybe mm -hmm. you shouldn't have done that." And I was like, "Mom, you're you're, you're my mom. Like, why are you not defending me?" And she's like, "Because you're not right. Mm. You're wrong." Yeah. And having her explain that to me and realize that it was so important. And yeah. you need to you need to be kept in check. Everyone needs to be kept in check, and you. Find your people that will mm -hmm. that will keep you yeah. honest. Support you, but also keep you honest. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, okay. that's number two. And the third truth, <laughs> the last thing that they'd be remembering you by. You said you wanted people to challenge you with questions and conversations. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I just want it to be meaningful because it's. Uh, I'm sure it will be. I want it to. It's important. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be remembered, you want to be remembered and and celebrated and you want this message to continue mm -hmm. on and um, maybe I'm torn between two things mm. um, one of them is the ability to forgive and let go mm -hmm. both for me to forgive and let go and for um, and to be able to actually apologize to someone mm if you've done them wrong. Uh, that's another thing I've learned as, as I've gotten older, not to like hold on to grudges mm -hmm. and to realize that there's no point in yeah. holding on to things, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And, and really sometimes- yourself, yeah. Yeah, because it just, that, that negative energy, you have to either say sorry to someone if you did it, if it's like bugging you or, or to have a conversation and, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's communication. Maybe mm -hmm. if, if I want people to remember one last thing, it's just to, it's something that took me a very long time to figure out and that's to talk. Yeah. And be honest about if something's wrong, if you're not feeling good, if you feel like someone hurt you, just talk to them about it, get it out of the way and they will hopefully do something about it and you'll feel better about it because if there's something you did, you if you hurt someone and you didn't like, hopefully people don't do things intentionally to hurt each other. But mm -hmm. once, but if you're if you're made aware of an issue, then you can do something about it. Yeah. And yeah. so I think it's so important to to tell people how you feel and and communicate because a lot of the problems in the world could be solved if we just talk to each mm -hmm. other in a nice way and yeah. and expressed our feelings. Yeah. Before I ask the uh, the final 
question. I want to take a moment to acknowledge you, Nina, for your incredible heart, for your giving nature, for your your commitment to helping other women to rise up, to um, be aware, and to continue to push the limits. You know, you're you left something that was very popular, successful, making a lot of money to go do something that was more fulfilling for you, and to be an inspiration to so many young women in the world and men to show them what's possible for themselves. So I acknowledge you for your incredible giving nature, your curiosity, your playfulness, your and your your desire to live in service. Hmm. I think you have such a big platform that you wanting to give back more now is a powerful example. So I acknowledge you for all that. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, of course. Yeah, I mean it is it is we do have huge platforms yeah. and it is important to try to inspire people. Yeah. To use it for good and, mm -hmm. and by the way while we're on the topic I would like to acknowledge you you are doing incredible things and spreading powerful messages and Thank you. I, <clears throat> excuse me very much <laughs> I want to tell you I over the holidays I was in the airport and I was walking through to buy gum or something and I saw these two books both of them yes both mm -hmm. of them next to each other New York Times bestsellers oh. mister you're killing it thank you and I, was, I literally was like wait I know that guy. Wait, <laughs> See, I did acro yoga with that that's guy. That's my friend. I did acrobatic <laughs> yoga with that guy. Is it? And then I wasn't sure. I was like, "Am I crazy?" And I took a picture and I sent it to Brooks, and he was like, "Yep, that's him." Same, same dude had you suspended <laughs> in midair. Like it's so crazy. Yeah. So. Thank you. You good? Yeah. So I am very proud of you. Thank and, you. Appreciate and it. Acknowledge all the great things that Thank you're doing you. for the world. Thank you. I appreciate. It. I don't know if you know about this book. This is about men opening up and healing the stuff, the trauma from the past that men have faced that make them so guarded, that make them mm. so hurtful towards people, other men, women, and the society in general. It's all about forgiving, men forgiving themselves, healing the inner pain, and uh, you know, communicating better. With, That's with exactly what I was just gonna say. I so. feel like it's, it's, it's a communication thing. Yeah, absolutely. Like we talked about before. I think that yeah. if, if, if men were able to express themselves, I feel like there's so much, there's so much, um, uh, it's it's like a catch twenty two because mm -hmm. men are supposed to be like strong and mm -hmm. never show fear or sadness or cry and and vulnerability. Like men aren't supposed to be vulnerable right. apparently, mm -hmm. but that's when egos get in the way and that's when when they get sort of like pigeonholed and sort of put into a box and they they feel like stuck and that's trapped. Like, trapped exactly. I felt trapped my whole life. Yeah. Until I started to be aware of it and start to let go of stuff and be vulnerable and not try to be perfect all the time, mm. not try to win at everything, not to be right at everything. Mm. Because in some ways, the, the desire to win and be right at everything, it worked. I got results. But my inner world was constantly suffering. Mm. And I didn't know how to communicate without anger or frustration or resentment. Because mm. being vulnerable is like less than a girl. If you're, if you're like a jock athlete, you couldn't be vulnerable ever. Well, the, that's the perception right? that you can't right, be vulnerable, right, exactly. but it's so important. I Absolutely. Think, I think that, yeah, I mean, the, 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 it's, it's, it's the whole masculinity and, and mm -hmm. sort of like tough guy thing is, is very dated. And, Absolutely, yeah. And the paradigms are shifting, and I, feel, I think it's great. I think yeah. there's great things happening this year, and I think that 2018 is going to be such a powerful, mm -hmm. amazing, positive sort of like... Le paradigm shifting year That's it. and I, I I wish all good things to the yeah. universe and to everyone in it and I think it's yeah. gonna it's, things are happening this year absolutely we've been cleansed during this uh, yep. I want to make sure people follow you it's just at Nina on Instagram on Instagram and on Facebook and on Twitter it's at Nina Dobrev as well as on Facebook I believe it's at Nina Dobrev too yeah. So make sure you guys follow Nina. Take a screenshot of this um, that you're listening or watching. Tag Nina on Instagram. Let her know what you're thinking about this. Send her a message on Twitter. I'm not sure what you check the most, but send her some love uh, mm -hmm. and share this with your friends. And then share love with all of your friends and everyone around you as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you just came out with a new this new... Uh, video that came out on Funny or Die, so we'll have it linked up on the show notes as well, so you cool. guys can watch that. Make sure to share that out and spend some, uh, send some love out with that. And um, anything else that they should be aware of to be following or supporting, Time's Up, check out the website, be a part of that movement. Please, Anything yes. else, movies that you have coming out that you're allowed to talk about yet or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have, um, I have three coming out next year. 
So go watch yeah. all of them. Yeah. Support them all in theaters. Please, yeah. Online. Dog Days is one of them. Okay. Um, 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 a Lucky Day is another one. That one I'm really proud of, actually. Oh, I okay. should have said that. Damn it. When you asked me earlier what I was really proud oh, of that people might fine. not know about. No, no, no. They're can still I, listening. Can, okay. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I got to... Um, grow, so I speak French. We talked about it a little bit. Mm. Um, but it's like a broken, weird French slang from my yeah. brothers and sisters that I just picked up as I was growing up. And this year, I was given the opportunity to play a French, uh, a French character. Wow! So, so I you speak spoke French, in French on in a film. That's why I cut wow. my hair really short with the bangs. Um, I spoke French in it, and then when I speak English, it's with a French accent. Wow! And it was probably the hardest thing that I've had to do because it's one thing to ta have a conversation with someone in French in person; it's another <laughs> thing to do it on camera, knowing that it's going to be on screens and people mm. are going to be watching it and judging it. And people in France are going to be watching it. So I still don't know if the people in France will be satisfied with my performance, right. but um, but it was super. I've never been more serious and more engaged mm. and more passionate about having put work and time into something. It was wow. the most method I think I've been really? so far on a roll. Yeah, you went Jim Carrey on us. Not huh? quite Jim Carrey. No, 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 <laughs> Did no. you I watch just, that documentary? I did. I think. Oh, I thought incredible! It was, was it? What, what was weird was that like I thought he was crazy at times, and it was like he a was, lot. He, yeah, he was. He totally but was. I mean, he was. But at the same time, it's probably good. Mm, that's okay. <laughs> Just put it on your, your uh, chest, maybe, or your skin. There you go, yeah. yeah but at the same time, as much as I thought he was crazy, I could also understand him, because I'd just done the movie. Right. I watched it right after I finished shooting my film. So I also was like, oh, I can relate, actually. Yeah, yeah. Like you, do, you do sort of need to, to embody and be this person, and uh -huh. when it's so far from who you really are, Otherwise for it's not it to gonna be real. feel real when you just, you can't just yeah. turn it on when you're in the scene. Like, no. act. You know. No, I mean I've done tons of like I've done tons of movies and, and especially with comedy like it's so e it's so much easier to just like jump in and out yeah, and yeah. like be laughing in between the takes and then just as soon as they call action you just like do your th you focus. But on this film because I had to think about my performance I was playing an older woman I was I had a nine year old child in the film mm. I I had to speak another language I had to think about the accent and the words and the intention behind what I was saying and doing. That took up so much of my brain power wow. and so much of my energy that I couldn't, I had to stay in it. I wow. wasn't the fun go lucky person on set. Like, I yeah. wasn't chatting with people in between the takes. I was with the script was in my lap and I was looking down and nothing else was going on around me. Wow. I would not allow anything to penetrate. It was the first time I didn't bring my phone to, to the set at all. I left it in the, in the hotel or in my trailer. Wow. I just like couldn't. I couldn't, and then it, and it and it was so fulfilling. I haven't seen the movie. Don't know if it's gonna be wow. good. I really hope it is. But um, but yeah. So I did that. Dog days. Dog days. Lucky day. Was lucky that one day. Called? Yeah. And, and uh, departures one? also comes out next year. All these come out in this year, 2018. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So go I to the, go to the movies, support it, share out the trailers when they come out. Mm -hmm. We'll link up all the stuff as well. Um, anything you. else we should be aware of or to support you? Anything else? Um. Just be a good person. Let's be a good person. Mm -hmm. Final question for you is what's your definition of greatness? In a French accent. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My definition of uh, greatness is to um, have a collection of great moments. Mm. Great, one great moment in that moment, if you continue it on. If all of them are something you are proud of, then you will achieve greatness and you will look back in your life and remember all the good things that have happened in your life. Mm. How was that accent? That Perfect. Was improv and scary. I love it. Nina, thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's great. <laughs>